check that out. That's like an old Model T hubcap or something. That's pretty cool. I'm definitely keeping that. The first find of the day looks like it's gonna be a spoon and it is I guess whenever they get new silverware they just threw away the old who knows but we find tons of it in here we're gonna keep on going we're about down to where we're gonna start finding some bottles and we got a med already sticking out on this side nice big slick that surprises me I figured that it would have had something on it. Still, I've had a lot of people ask me to keep some slicks and sell them. And uh, so I'm going to pack a few up today and maybe sell them in groups of 10 for like $10 or something on eBay. Uh, something like that. Just so people can have them. Uh, either way, we'll keep going. Here's the top to the mason jar. And right behind that mason jar top was the mason, mason jar lid. Obviously, it's done rusted and rotted away but that would have went together at one point i'm not sure why they threw mason jars away uh something that uh a lot of people don't think about is how superstitious everyone was uh back then so if the mason jar had a number 13 on the bottom of it unlucky 13 they would trash it so they're harder to find uh, but if you do find one with a 13 on it, it's a little bit rare because they would break them and throw them away back in the old days because of superstitious because of being superstitious. Anyways, we'll keep going. Here's the big headlight. Don't know what that would have been on. It's a good size though. Whatever it was. Got that out of the way. It's going to give us a little bit more room to keep on moving backwards. Look for us some good medicines bottles today. So, we'll keep on going. Here's a nice melted one for you. McCormick's Company, Baltimore. McCormick's made spices. They also made poisons. What a combination, huh? And look, this one has indented sides on it. Kind of like those uh, those aqua bottles that I found last week. So it kind of makes me wonder if McCormick's was the maker of the aqua color ones that I was looking at. Huh, it's pretty neat, though. We'll keep on going. Alright, I just flipped this nice little stopper out right here. Let's see, it says 57. Heinz 57 ketchup stopper. It's really nice though. I don't know that I've ever found one with a 57 on it. So I'll take that. But as you can see, I've got two bottles sticking out right back here. Let me set this stopper down. Right. Here is a med neck. Right there is a flask. So let's see if I can get these out one handed. One may have just broke free a little bit. And that one is a slick. And more than likely the flask is too. Around here, you don't find a ton of flasks that are embossed. Oh, it's not a flask. There's something else. Might be a big ketchup. Or wine. Let's see. It is a big, slick wine bottle. So, look like a flask top up there, though, to me. Either way, I guess I'll keep on digging in that direction. Seems to be more glass over there. See what else pops out. Pop my head up out of the hole, and I'm kind of walking around seeing what all has been left behind. That's a nice strap-sided brown medicine right here. Uh, I'll probably take that one with me. Uh, there's another clear med. Nice big brown one that's been left behind. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff out here that uh, we just haven't carried out yet. In all honesty, because we're really the only ones digging here. There's a brown med and another one. There's a brown Vaseline laying right there. Uh, a bunch of those slick meds uh, and clear flasks like this one right here. They're really neat to look at, but it's just such a hassle to clean these things out and get them all pristine and nice 
to only really turn around and sell them for a couple dollars. And that's funny, this one that I showed y'all that I thought was slick, I looked at it now, and it's not. That's a Dr. Bell's sitting there. Well, how about that? I flipped it over and looked at the back side. Oh, it's got a crack in it. That's why it got left behind, I was wondering. Ah, uh, oh well. We'll leave that one behind and bury it. There's another one right here. What is this? Oh, it broke too. So there's some stuff laying up here that has cracks in it, and you just have to kind of pick through it, but some of it's still pretty good. And I'll probably load up on that today since I don't have anybody here digging with me. Uh, it's really been a, a drag digging by myself. It's a lot more fun when you have people digging with you. That's for sure. But in either case, it's uh, something that I am not going to miss out on while I have the opportunity to do it. Especially with the daylight hours about to change with daylight savings time, we're going to be losing our afternoon time that I like to dig. So I like to make the best of what's left of the time that I have. And... Uh, dig as much good stuff as I can. I'm going to move around, see what else I can find, and I'll get back with y'all here in a minute. Alright, I've got a med bottom sticking out right here. Let's see what it is. Ugh. Oh, another slick. Today has been a slick day. This is not what I like. Either way, there's got to be something else left in here. Not leaving until I find something embossed. There we go. Here's another med. This one's got to be embossed. Come on. Come on. Hey, it's embossed. It is a California fig syrup. The California Fig Company opened at Reno, Nevada in 1878 selling its only product, Syrup of Figs. The firm had a rocky beginning, reorganizing twice before it achieved success with the final 1897 corporation. The Sterling Remedy Company purchased the California Fig Company in 1912, and it remains in business to the present. California Fig packaged its products in a total of six different embossed bottles, as well as at least one variation used in England. In addition, the different Incarnations of the firm used generic bottles with paper labels both before and after the adoption of the embossed containers, an apparently common phenomenon in remedies successful enough to remain popular from the 1870s to the 20th century. Like all long-lived medicinal containers, the bottles used for California fig syrup evolved through several stages of embossing as well as through different manufacturers. A combination of dating techniques allows us to reliably date each stage of use. The bottles that we find in our videos were made by Illinois Glass and were used from 1915 to 1929, which explains why we find them closer to the top of our ash layer, which is the newer section. <laughs> uh, I'll take it at this point. Alright, so if there's embossed stuff right there, that's a good sign. I know which line to follow around. Let's see what else I can pull out of there. Got another med bottom sticking out right here. And another slick and cracked. Man. All right. See what else is in here. Check that out. That's like an old Model T hubcap or something. That's pretty cool. I'm definitely keeping that. And there's my poison that I wanted. Of course, it's broke. That's how my life works. <laughs> Try not to be a Debbie Downer, but it's hard when you have a day like today. Uh, can't win them all that's for sure as y'all heard me say in the past we can't always end up with great finds but it's not fun to film when you're not finding the awesome stuff that we normally do so i think i'm going to end it for the day and uh maybe i'll come back when i've got somebody to dig with me and see if we can do a little bit better either way i appreciate y'all watching and we will see you guys next time